Hi, I'm Paul. Welcome to MIG Monday. You know, one of the best things about this job uh, is I get to try a lot of machines. And boy, I just came across a little honey right here. This is an ESOB multi-process machine, the Rebel. Uh, they make three models of this. They have the multi-process one, which is the one this is. And then they make a MIG and flex cord only. And another model that's MIG, flex cord, and stick. And this one, which is MIG, flex cord, stick, as well as lift start TIG. So I like this one because, you know, no matter what you're going to have, to deal with, you're going to be able to do it with this unit right here. Uh, it, it runs on 115 volt, 220 volt. Uh, at, at the 115 volt, you're looking at 150 amps, 5 to 150 amp output. And if you have it fortunate enough to be able to hook it up to the 220, well, then you're running from 5 to 240 amps. So you have a lot more capacity out of it. But I want to show you some of the things it comes with. This is, again, this is the multi process model. So it comes with everything you're going to need. Uh, I already mentioned it's a multi voltage machine. So you have a little pigtail adapter that comes with it. You get your gas hose. You get a sample pack of O30 ESOB wire, MIG wire. Of course, you get your ground clamp and cable. A regulator so you can adjust your gas flow. And this is, this is actually the kind of regular I like that has a little ball that floats in here because they're a lot more accurate than the ones that have a separate meter for that. So that's, that's pretty neat right there itself. Uh, I mentioned it's multi-process. Uh, you also get, besides this wire here, you get a sample pack of stick electrodes if you're going to use it in a stick mode. You also get the stick electrode holder. And if you're going to use it in a TIG mode, you get a TIG torch, and that comes complete with collets, collet bodies, nozzles, and tungstens, everything you pretty much need for uh, your TIG wrap welding application. And of course, with MIG welding, um, you know, you can have different sizes and stuff, so you also have a drive roll uh, kit that has a couple different sizes for drive rolls for various wire sizes you'll be using. And of course, you have your MIG gun. This is a Tweco 180. It's a pretty nice, pretty industrial, basically, and it's good solid, and it feels very good in your hand. So as we get to welding stuff, you'll see that uh, this is a pretty good performing uh, gun as well. Let's look, take a look at the machine itself. We got a lot of nice features with that. Let me slide some of this stuff out of the way a little bit here. Um, let's take a look at the insides first. First thing you're going to notice uh, is you have a... a Procedure chart. Okay, it's going to give you amperages and voltages uh, for your various metal sizes, various wire thicknesses, different gases that you might use for the different processes. Uh, so that that's pretty handy. And you'll come to see with this particular model, uh, even this is almost unnecessary because uh, the technology that goes into this machine allows you to do all that stuff automatically right from the front. Uh, it has a what they call a smart MIG feature where you just set your thickness of your material and it takes care of amperages and voltages for you. You don't even have to worry about it. Uh, <clears throat> you can put a 12 pound spool on here, 12 and a half pound spool of wire. Uh, and like most of these small MIG welding machines, this bigger spool comes off so you have a small uh, thing so you can use the, uh, you know, the small two pound reel that you get as a sample here. <clears throat> I have a cast aluminum uh, drive roll body. Uh, it's got adjustable pressure on the drive rolls, and you put that down and if you need to put more or less pressure, depending on whether you're welding with solid wire or flex cord wire, you can adjust that. And of course, the drive roll changes, no tools required for this, by the way. The drive roll changes just, just unscrews, just slide the drive roll off, put the appropriate drive roll on, whether it's going to be for a different wire size or if it's going to be a neural drive roll for, for flex cord wire, uh, very easy to change that out. This knob right here, you want to make sure that this is fully out. Uh, it just, this is what clamps the gun in place. And when you're sliding the gun in, I've had, <laughs> I don't like to tell too many stories on myself, but I've had a couple of occasions where I set a machine up and thought I had pushed the gun in all the way and, and then locked it down. And it turns out, at the end of the gun, these are the holes where the gas flow comes in, you know, because you've got a gas solenoid in here and it's going to come through the machine and into the gun and out the nozzle to protect your weld pool. And if you don't have this pushed far enough in, your holes aren't going to line up and you're not going to get any gas. And then you get the machine all set up and you start welding and you say, what the heck is wrong? And then you realize you didn't have this shoved in all the way. So make sure you have this out far enough that this will fit up in there all the way and then you tighten that back down. 
Okay. I think that pretty much covers the inside of the thing. Uh, let's take a look at uh, the front panel and all the stuff it does in the front. One of the things I also want to point out is the, the, just the rugged appearance of this thing. Uh, besides looking like a nice machine, which it is, uh, look, at the, look at the protection that it has. It's got a handle front and back to make it easy to carry around or on the top to carry or even a single here. So not only does it have a lot of places to grip it and carry it if you're carrying it by yourself or with another person, but they also act as kind of like fenders or bumpers it, it, you know, to help protect the machine from impacts from the, uh, on the front where all the controls and everything are. So that protects it all pretty darn nicely. And then just also from an industrial look, a lot of these small home type machines, uh, they're put together with sheet metal screws, which you know, really, there's really nothing wrong with that, but just the, the durability and the, the thought that went into this thing, I think is represented by this, these hex head cap screws that they use to hold the sheet metal on. They're all, you know, the Allen wrenches to tighten them down. And that whole machine is put together like this. There's not a sheet metal screw to be seen. So I think that just, that just gives it a, a good solid look as far as I'm concerned from a, you know, just from an aesthetic position, if nothing else. And when I turn this on, you have a display screen here. And this, this is basically, this has got everything in it. This is actually pretty amazing. Uh, especially for people, you know, the home hobby guy, you know, something goes, you need a new liner, you need a, you need a contact tip, you gotta come up with a part number, so you have to keep the manual somewhere along. And then you, you know, you don't need it for a while, and then you gotta scrounge around where the heck is the manual for this thing. All that stuff is in here. Uh, in this screen, down here, this is the cool part right here. Well, actually, it's all pretty cool. But this is the user manual. You click on that, and now you got a, a, some some a menu over here for operation. Parts that wear out are, in, are interchangeable, and then uh, maintenance things you have to do. Let's go to the the, the wear parts. You just put the little icon on there, hit the button again, and then you go across here, wear parts for the MIG gun, hit the button, and it's gonna give you the different parts that you need for your MIG gun, the, the, the gas cone, contact tips, all the parts that you might need, the liner, all the stuff for the gun. Or you can go over here to the next one, and this is for uh, parts like drive rolls, uh, guide tubes, things of that nature. So everything you need is built right in the machine. You don't have to go scrounging around looking for a, an owner's manual. That's, I think that's, that's just a, amazing. You can, when you press this button, this is smart, this is SMIG, this is smart MIG. Boy, that's, that's a nice feature because you don't even have to think about what your wire feed speed and voltage is. It just does it automatically based on the thickness of the material that you, t uh, you tell the machine you're gonna weld on. Uh, a lot of the old timers don't want machines picking stuff out for them. Maybe they like a little harsher arc or a little softer arc. Well, just by going to the next facet here, which is just, just says MIG, that gives you the control of your wire speed and voltage so that you can set whatever parameters you particularly want. Then you have your flux cord setting. You just turn a knob and it goes to flux cord. Stick welding, lift start TIG. So I'm gonna go over here to smart MIG, because I think that a lot of us are gonna be using that because that's, that's the, almost like the no brainer. So I go on smart MIG, I hit the button, <clears throat> and now you see a wire size up here, okay? If I turn this knob, it can go to a different wire, 023, 030, 035. So basically you select what wire size you're gonna have. Now the machine comes with 030, so I'm gonna just, whoop, set it for 030. Click the button, and now what you have is a display. Okay, so here we have a, a gauge display, and if I'm not welding on 10 gauge, you just this knob that's adjacent to that display, you turn that, and you go 12 gauge, 14 gauge, thinner and thinner, or you turn it the other way, and you go 3 16 quarter inch, up to 3 8 And of course, one of the things that will not allow is for you to overextend if you're hooked up to 115 volts it knows what voltage you're set up on so it's going to allow the parameters that work best with that particular voltage
Okay, this is the back of the machine. This is where the on and off switch is and also where you attach the gas. Now, to give you a gas hose, and since we're gonna set this up for MIG welding, I'm gonna connect the gas hose. Just screws right in here. It's pretty much like all the small welders do. And my wrench. Snug that down. Gonna turn this around. I have my a bottle of C25 over here chained up to the table. This is the regulator that comes with the machine. As I already mentioned, I really like this type that have the floating ball uh, indicator for your flow. And connect the hose and this will be ready to go. Okay, we're all set there. Now, inside, we're going to mount some wire. It's already set up for the 030 wire on the drive roll, so I don't have to worry about that. But this is a small spool, sample spool, and it's got the small half inch hole. So, what I, first thing I have to do is take this spindle out that's for the bigger, really more economical rolls of the, the 12 and a half pound spools. You just unscrew this nut in the center and what comes, what comes off is the nut, the washer, the spring, and a little pressure plate. That's, that's this piece here. Just slide that off, set it out of the way. You put the spool of wire on. All right, now, before I loosen the, the, where the wire is connected to the spool, you notice it unravels. If I put it this way, it's gonna feed off the bottom. Now, this is something you have to pay attention to on, on some of these wire feeders because this one, the drive roll housing is level with the ground. Some of them point this way. So if you've got one that kind of angles up, you're gonna to wanna to feed off the top of the roll. This one you wanna feed off the bottom of the roll so that it goes basically straight into the drive roll assembly. So we're just going to slide this on here. Then we're going to take this piece right here and we're going to put the flat section against the roll and this little protrusion, if you can see that, is what's going to stick out. It goes on like that. Then the spring and the washer and this screw just all fit in there. Now this isn't something you crank down real tight. This is all, this can all be done by hand. You don't really need a wrench for this. And what you really wanna do is just have a decent amount of resistance so that this doesn't free spin. Because uh, if you're wire feeding and then just you stop pulling the trigger, you're gonna cut off power to the drive rolls and this is gonna have some inertia and it's gonna continue to spin if you don't have this snug enough and then the wire will loosen up and come out and cause you a problem. So you just wanna have some resistance so that it doesn't free spin on you. Okay, now. Got to find where the heck those cutters went. There they are. All right, now, what I want to do here is grab the wire and without cutting it, I'm just I'm used, happen to be using a pair of cutters, but I'm going to pull that out like so. Don't lose control of this or you're going to lose a whole heck of a lot of wire as this whole thing springs loose. So I'm get there. I, you notice the way I kind of backbended it to get it to uh, be relatively straight rather than a curve like I have here. Right here, it's relatively straight. I'm going to feed it in through these guide tube and out. There's the outgoing guide tube on the other side. And I want to have it in there. Okay. Put the put the. Uh, Idle roll down against here, put that up, and now the wire is under control. And realistically, what I might have wanted to do first 
but it's too late now because I've already done it, is mount the gun. <clears throat> so, you notice it's got a connection here that goes to the front of the machine that gives power to the gun. And this is gonna just come through this hole in the front and into the aluminum housing. And then you're just gonna push that in. Yeah, see this is why you should always do the wire for, or the gun before you do the wire. I don't wanna, you gotta push that in. All right, got it in fully. I can see that it's fully seated. Tighten that down. And now we're all set. Now to get power to the gun, I just plug this up into this amphenol connection here in the front of the machine. You can only go on one way, so you don't have to worry about messing that up. All right. Okay. This little pigtail sticking out here is so to select your polarity. Now we know MIG welding gets done with positive polarity, and typically flux cord welding gets done with negative polarity. And if you're gonna use one of the other processes, TIG or, or stick, you might need to change polarity as well. So because this is gonna be positive polarity, this is the power that's going to the gun, all right? This, or not the power, but the, the polarity that's gonna to go to the gun. So we want a positive polarity on our gun, so I'm just gonna bend this back around and connect it here to the positive connection. If I was flux cord welding, which was negative polarity, I'd be connecting it here. Our ground cable or work lead, what different people call it different things, is just going to plug into the other side. Same thing. Stuck it in and twist it, and you're all set to go with that. Now, we have power to the gun. I can turn the machine back on. You notice I just started the wire. Now when I pull the trigger, it's going to feed wire, and eventually it's going to come out the end of the, the, end of the gun here. And you can speed that up, you know, if you want, by turn that. Now remember, when this comes out, it's going to be electrically hot, so don't be waving it all around something that you have your work connection to, because if that wire comes out and makes contact while you've got the trigger pulled, you're going to get an arc. Okay, so now we have our wire. And realistically, we are ready to weld. This can just go together. And it fits real neatly right there inside the machine so you don't have to go searching for, through your shop for it when you want to uh, change to a larger type spool. Okay, here we go. And basically, let the welding begin. Okay, I'm ready to weld. So what I've done, uh, I don't know if I mentioned earlier, but there's a handy little thickness gauge that comes packed in with this machine as well. So I have these pieces of steel I'm just gonna tack together to make a fillet weld, uh, just so you can see how this thing welds. But I'd use that little gauge, and it turns out this is 3 16ths of an inch. So all I had to do is go around to the front, as I indicated before, turn that knob until I got a display of 3 16 and now the machine is going to automatically give me the proper wire feed speed and voltage combination for this particular material and thickness. So with that, I'll, let me tack this together, and then we'll do a weld. Automatic settings, I didn't set wire feed speed, I didn't set voltage, all I set was 3 16 of an inch and made a pretty darn nice looking weld right here for you. Okay, so <clears throat> there we have it, a great little machine, great weld. Thanks for watching MIG Monday and see you next time around. Well, if you learned something today or like what you saw, please feel free to subscribe and keep an eye out for new episodes every MIG Monday.